time to check your um, where you're at and just do some practice problems. Just a reminder of some of the facts you need to, to know for this, this, this learning check. Um, the actual velocity can be broken into its x and y components. The reason why that's important for projectile motion is the x component doesn't change. So if you know it one place, you know it everywhere. Whereas the y component, as you see this thing go up, it disappears. It's nothing at the top, and it increases until it gets to the bottom, to the back to the bottom. And the two places where we have the largest y are going to be at the beginning and at the end. And so if you put that the x component that stays the same with the y component where it's the biggest here at the beginning and here at the end. Um, then you would have the maximum velocity at the beginning and at the end, and you're going to have the minimum velocity, which is just the Vx at the top. So that's a question that I ask you during this learning check. Let's go through the practice problems. Um, stone is kicked 10 meters per second horizontally from a cliff 52 meters high. How long does it take the rock to hit the ground? So they're giving you some information. They give you the Vx. Um, horizontally kicked, that's where the X comes through. It's 52 meters high, so it's going to fall down 52 meters. How long does it take the rock to, to hit the ground? Well, we're trying to find T. In order to find T, we're going to need some extra information. It's kicked horizontally, so it's just going directly straight out. It's not going down at the beginning, and it's going to accelerate because it's in the air. And so this information, and we don't even need this one for this first problem, is going to lead you to if VIY is zero, we can always go to that specialized when VIY is zero and we're given a, a Y, a height, and we know how we know our acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So we plug in our numbers, and you're going to have different numbers, but that's what you do. You plug in your numbers, and for my answer, I get 3.22 seconds. So make sure you pause this, fast forward this, do it as, as, you, as you need to to get to, to what you need help on. So second question, Jake Fromm threw a football 5 meters per second horizontally from the edge of a cliff 57 meters high. So this is that tells you it's being thrown horizontally. That tells you it's a X, VX, and all these problems are horizontal motion problems. And it's going to fall 57 meters because he's up 57 meters at the beginning of this problem. It's not going down at the beginning. It's going directly horizontal at the beginning, so no VIY. It's falling through the air, so it's accelerating 10 meters per second squared. And now we have all our information. This time we want to get to how far from the base of the cliff it is. So this time we want to find out what this x is. But we can't do that unless we have the time. We have enough information to solve for time here. Back to our projectile motion section. You should be looking at that as you're doing this. For most of these problems, that's all the only pro equations you need are the specialized ones. Uh, we can plug in our numbers. Once again, each problem is going to have new numbers, so, so double check your numbers. We have our y, we have our g. There's a 2 here. Don't forget the 2, and don't forget to square root the whole thing. I get 3.38 meters for my time, and that's going to be the time that also is going to go into the x-axis, and now we're ready to go ahead and use this equation and solve for our x. Plugging in our values, we have our vx, we have our t, and I get, for my answer, 16.9 meters on E-class. If you're doing this on an E-class quiz, you'd have 16.9 at the beginning, meters at the end. Okay, how high is a pu tough puff and flying um, 20 meters? Uh, well, how high is a puff, tough and tough, a tough puff and flying 20 meters per second horizontally when it dropped a jellyfish that landed 45 meters horizontally away? So it's flying horizontally 20 meters. It um, lands horizontally away. So here it's talking about this. It lands horizontally away. Doesn't matter if it's from the ground or from the top. It's still horizontal. And then they ask you for how high is the, puff, the tough puffin. And that's that's the Y. Um, it's going only, only horizontal at the beginning. So there's your VIY of zero. There's your G because it's, it's, it's in the, the jellyfish is now in the air. So you're trying to solve for time so you can get to your, your the end answer. They're asking you for how high it is. Um, and so we need to find time here so we can use time there. And in our x-axis, there's only one equation, v equals x over t. Or in your projectile motion section, you see the same equation as x equals vx times t. Plugging in our numbers, once again, your different numbers. So I get 2.25. And so whatever I get there, I'm going to also have here. And now I'm finally ready to solve for y. There's an equation in your projectile motion section, plugging in your numbers. Don't forget the square root of the t, only the t. This first part will cancel out because it's time zero, and you're going to get something. You'll have something. My answer was 25.3 meters on E class. That's unit. That's the that's the actual number. 
don't worry about above the ground, but it's asking you about how high it is. So on E class, I, I, I don't have a spot for you to write that down. So you just write down the 25.3 and then meters in the unit. Where is a tough puff and flying horizontally located when a fish drops uh, dropped hits the ground? So what I want you to think about is when you first start this this puff toughen and whatever the top bird looking thing is that's my that's my tough puffin and there's my 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 fish they're both traveling the same velocity in the x axis cuz the 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 bird's flying horizontal and the fish is just going with it and once this fish is dropped they're still going to travel the same vx the whole time so even though the y axis velocity of the fish increases it's still going to be below the puff toughen the whole time until it hits the ground and when it hits the ground the, the puff toughen is going to be right above uh, the fish, and so there's your answer directly above it. So back to our problems. Um, so you have a puff toughen traveling 21 meters per second horizontally, drops drops jellyfish landing 56 meters away. What's the vertical velocity when it hits the ground? So this one you have your x-axis givens, your y-axis givens, but they ask you something unique. So you still have starting from you know rest in the y-axis you have accelerating in the y-axis you're asked for the final velocity well with this information it's going to be important to get t i have enough information to get t there so i go ahead and i solve for t using my x-axis equation and i get 2.67 or constant motion equation 2.67 seconds that's now my t in both sections now i just want to remind you of something from before uh, when we had these in the 1D motion section, this was A, this was VI, this was VF, and we had this equation right here. It's exactly the same equation, it's just specialized. You look back at your 1D motion equation, this one's not in your projectile motion section, that's why it's it's a little bit of a, it, it helps, but it also can hurt you out if you're always looking for your equation in the projectile motion section. Here, you just have to look at the, the acceleration equations, pick out your right equations with your givens, and plug in the values, and you get your answer. So my answer here was 26.7 with the numbers I have up top. And then on E-class, it would look for this and this. That would be your unit. That would be the number. I don't have a spot for downward. How tall is the castle wall if an arrow lands 60 meters away from the base when shot 15 meters per second horizontally from the top? So it's shot horizontally right there. It's going to land x uh, from the base 60 meters. So that's an x-axis component. We're asked for how tall a castle is. So we know how far it drops. We know how tall the castle is. It's starting from rest because it's going horizontally at the beginning and it's accelerating downwards at 10 meters per second squared. So we have everything we need to solve for t. In this case, we're going to, going to start solving for t in the x-axis. So we have all our information. We got our x. We got our our our, our vx. Plug in our numbers, and I get six. I get four seconds with the givens I have. And so when you get that four seconds, that is also going to be your time there. So whatever your time here is, is going to be your time there. And now we're done with the x-axis. We're only going to consider the y-axis. And we're asked for how tall the castle is. And so this one's back to our projectile motion section. It's sitting there in your projectile motion section if you're in my class. And you plug in your values. And I get 80 meters. Once again, don't forget the squared. Uh, and don't, you know, don't, don't forget the little parts. But you get 80 meters per second if you have the numbers that I have, which you probably won't. Don't worry about above the ground. There's your number. There's your unit for E-Class if you're doing my, my quiz. Okay, so more information. The What's true about the x-axis and y-axis velocity and projectile motion? Well, only the y-axis is accelerated by gravity at 10 meters per second squared down. There's no no x-axis, nothing going on accelerating or changing the velocity. The, the x-axis is going to be in constant motion. What's the initial vertical component of velocity when a ball is thrown 40, 14 meters per second angle 38 degrees? So I have my givens. This is what I gave you a picture of. And you're trying to take this and you're trying to use this angle and break it in and find the, the, the initial y component because it's going to be at the beginning of the flight. That's going to change. So x will, ch x will stay the same and the y will change. And so you just take your numbers, throw your your unit your your magnitude on the hypotenuse throw the 38 um, closest to the origin to the beginning spot right here and now you're looking for the opposite side because it's directly straight ahead and that's going to lead you to sine so opposite sine of the angle times the hypotenuse 
Um, and so, and when it just says thrown, it's not saying vertically or horizontally, horizontal component. We're just talking about the overall. We're talking about the hypotenuse. And for my answer, I would have got 8.62. Once again, sine because it's the one across. And it's looking for the opposite side, knowing the hypotenuse. Okay, nine, just asking you now for the x. So we're looking for the adjacent side, which is going to go, once again, your numbers are going to be different. So watch out. They change between eight and nine. So don't use the same triangle from before. Right, right, draw a new triangle. Solve for this side. It's going to be the adjacent. So it goes with cosine. Plugging in your values, I get 23.1 um, as my number, and my unit was meters per second. So this is my entire magnitude. Once again, on E class, it'd be something like that, and something like that for your first and second blank. Okay, these ones don't ask you to do really much with it, and my animations may help you understand it a little bit more. This now is telling you that there is a vertical and upward component of 27 meters per second. So you're going to have a different number. So make sure you don't just copy down my numbers here. And if, if my initial vertical component was that, it's asking you what's the vertical component when it lands. So notice what happens to the y-axis. It flips, stops, and flips, and it lands at an opposite. So... My answer here, if my if it gave me initial initially 27 meters per second up, it's going to be 27 meters per second down, but I write down in this question, go ahead, I don't usually have you do it, but in this one I want a negative. So this would be your number, negative 27, and the unit would have been uh, meters per second for a problem like this. Okay, uh, number 11, now it's asking you for vertical acceleration. Well, vertical acceleration, and here I'm asking for magnitude, so I don't want the down, I don't want the negative. I just want 10 meters per second, and on your on E class it's going to be 10 meters per second per second. And I actually went ahead and uh, got rid of the, the the 10 points for the unit just in case you do do it this way. It's not going to mark you off for it. And horizontal acceleration there is none, so your answer would have been zero as your number, and your unit would have been meters per second per second. Once again, constant motion means no acceleration. And that would be the answer to this one. Okay, now we're going to what's the horizontal component of velocity. So we're not now looking back at velocity. We're not looking at acceleration anymore. And so it tells you the horizontal at the beginning. And the horizontal beginning is the same all the way through. So at the very end, right here, it's going to be 24 meters per second forward as well. It doesn't change. That, that green, the blue arrow stays the same the whole way through. Number 14, now it's asking you for the horizontal component of velocity. Um, but we know it tells you the horizontal component of the velocity, and it tells you the vertical, but it's asking you for the minimum velocity. What you want to see is that there's only one spot at the top where there's only there's only X component of velocity. There's only that blue arrow at the top while the red disappears, and that is that is the minimum velocity. The slowest this thing can go if it started off with an X component of 24. And at the beginning, it's going faster than 24 overall because it has a Y component. But at the top, it only has that one component. So this would be the minimum velocity, whereas the maximum velocity would be at the end. So that's where these questions are asking you those same questions. Where, where is it traveling with the minimum velocity? It's going to be at the top of the flight. There's only a VX ray at that point. And then the next one, um, okay, where is it traveling for a max with a maximum velocity? Once again, I need to remind you, the overall velocity is a mixture of the X and Y components put together as a single velocity. And so for that one right there, um, you're going to have it wherever you have the biggest the X is to stay the same. The VX stays the same, so it's going to be where you have the biggest Y, which is going to be at the bottom of the flight path. Both the beginning and the end are going to have the same uh, Y and X vectors, with the Y being the longest, the X being the same. And so at the bottom of the flight path. Okay, um, I gave you the answer. Uh, okay, so looking at the side, you have a puff toughen. This is a puff toughen right here. It's dropping a fish. And um, when it drops a fish, how does the package appear? To the, so this is not a puff toughen question, but just pr pretend it is. Um, plane's flying horizontally. The observer is watching it from the side. It's going to follow that curved path. It's going to falls in a curved parabolic path from an observer from the side. Now for the sake of a pilot, now in this case for the sake of this bird, how does it look like the fish falls? It looks like the fish falls directly down. It's always going to be right below the fish all the way to the end. At the very end when it hits the water, the fish is directly below the, um, in this case the pilot, or in this picture, the, the puff toughen.
And so hopefully that helps you do this quiz and, and do a really good job at it.